another quite fascinating uh, visualization that the tensor board provide is what is called as embedding projector so the tensor board offers an embedding projector to visualize data in 2d or 3d using algorithms like pca and tsni so we know that these algorithms pca and tsni are used for dimensionality reduction right so this embedding uh, the embedding projector functionality that is available in tensor board help us to visualize very high dimensional data so i will show you an example wherein which i have created a program to uh, visualize the mnist data set on a tensor board so mnist data set is a computer vision data set or it is a data set that has images it has images of handwritten digits so uh, it is a high dimensional data set and so let us see how we can visualize this high dimensional data set into a three dimension using tsni and visualize that through tensor board but of course uh, there are limitations to this projector uh, it cannot handle very large data samples so there is a restriction on the number of rows that this particular um, that a particular data set has to have uh, if to be visualized through a projector uh, and also uh, it does not show colors for more than 50 classes so if your data set has 50 different more than 50 classes and you wanted to show each of the data points belonging to these 50 classes by a separate color then if it is more than 50 classes uh, it does not show the colors right but in the case of mnist data set as we know the digits are only from 0 to 9 uh, it is just we have just 10 classes so let us go ahead and visualize this mnist data set using a tensor board so i have already have my code i will just run my <coughs> tensor board so my tensor board is up running so let's see as you can see so this is my <coughs> projector uh, embedding embedding projector for my mnist data set so this is pc pca uh, it has used pca in order to do the dimensionality reduction uh, we can even make it very fancier on this light mode so i'll just go here and I would say color by label so that I have 10 different colors so when you hover through it you can see what uh, what are the colors that are belonging to each of the classes let us go to this uh, tsni and we can start training it so that we can actually see how that uh, clustering happens so let's see It might take a while, just a few more seconds. So as you can see, it has started training iterations uh, 2021 as you can see. And here you can see that the number of records are 10,000 and uh, the dimensions is uh, 784. Uh, dimension 784 means that there are 784 columns in your data set. So you can see how it is training. and i can also search labels here so i say five so you could see how five is clustered or if i say uh, nine 
see how nine are clustered right so it's so as the training as the iteration progresses you could see that uh, these uh, values becomes more clustered to the uh, to each other because they belongs to the same class so let us stop the iteration for now uh, and see so see this is how my data points are clustered and its dimensionality is being now reduced right so i can also move from 3d to 2d so it is now 2d uh, i can again start doing my iteration and but this happens in like a 2d so we don't get that 3d feeling but still it's quite impressive so let us stop And as you can see, when we click here, we could see what are the labels that belongs, right? So one is clustered like here. So again, there are more interesting features to TensorBoard. Uh, if you feel interested by this visualization, what you can always do is whenever you build a neural network using a TensorFlow, uh, you could also build a TensorBoard so that you can do some fancy visualizations like this.